Hello there, folks. Jacob Rees-Mogg is on the moan yet again. Not for the first time in recent weeks, the target of his fury is civil servants and talk of impending industrial action over the government's Rwanda policy and the illegal migration bill. The Public and Commercial Services Union represents workers at the Home Office and Border Force, and they have stated some of their members are utterly demoralised at the fear of being forced to break the law and leave their morals at the door. So we'll start out by having a listen to Rhys Mogg's absurd monologue before he gets into a fairly civilised debate with human rights lawyer Shoaib Khan. But just note throughout this entire nonsense how Rhys Mogg really only has one argument, and that argument being how civil servants must obey the will of the government irrespective of whether they are being forced to do things that are either potentially illegal or almost certainly deeply immoral. This whole thing has a very I was only following orders feel about it. So let's take a look, shall we? The Public and Commercial Services Union has threatened to go on strike over the government's Rwanda policy and the illegal migration bill. Incidentally, the union was also part of a legal action being taken against the government last year over the deportation scheme. But this goes to the very heart of our constitution. How can we expect effective governance if the largest civil service union is both trying to sue the government and go on strike over a political matter. This is like the 1970s when some of the print unions refused to print leading articles in newspapers that they didn't agree with. It's not a question of pay or benefits, it's political. And it no, it's not necessarily political. It could be both illegal and is almost certainly immoral to some of these civil servants. To just dress it up as being entirely political and nothing more is wrong. Completely wrong. It's not a question of going on strike in all reality. It's a question of resigning. Because if you don't accept the government policy that you are paid to implement, you don't go on strike, you leave, and if you don't leave, you should be fired. This is not like being a government minister, Jacob. So if you disagree with government policy when you're a minister, you can resign and return to your day job on the back benches, representing your constituents only. When a civil servant resigns, they have no job. This isn't the same as the RMT, because we all know that Mick Lynch is an old-fashioned socialist, but rail workers have no obligation to political impartiality. Civil servants do, because they're ex executing the government's political agenda, which is backed by an electoral mandate based on a manifesto on which they were elected and for which people voted for them. Paul O'Connor, the PCS head of bargaining, said there will be no stomach among our members for implementing the Rwanda deal, an illegal migration bill. But I say to him to borrow from Henry V, he who hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart, but without his passport made up and no crowns in his purse. It's just another example of the left-wing state impeding electoral mandates and is a threat to democracy. What we have to understand is that our constitution is based on an apolitical civil service that works for the government of the day, regardless of whether or not it likes those policies. And when a new government comes in, it switches to manage for them. If that doesn't work, if civil servants are to choose which policies they will implement and which they will not, then why bother having elections? Why not just hand it all over to the bureaucracy? The very notion people opposed to the Rwanda plan and the illegal migration bill are left wing is absurd. That's how far to the right these nutters in government have lurched. They brand anybody opposed to these policies as left wing. Whereas there are many centrists and right of centre conservatives who think this is completely stupid. But they are to the left of Jacob Rees-Mogg. So he's happy to call them leftists. Of course, I want to know what you think. Mailmog at gbnews.com. But I'm now joined by the human rights lawyer and friend of the show, he's a regular uh, with us, uh, Shoaib Khan. Shoaib, thank you for joining me. I can't believe that even you think 
that civil servants should refuse to do the job for which they're paid. Doesn't this attack the whole understanding of an apolitical civil service? Um, I don't think it does. Yes, of course, they need to be apolitical and politically impartial. Um, but I think, you know, if we're saying that these people are, are, aren't being impartial, that would mean we're suggesting that if it for, was, for instance, a Labour government um, undertaking this policy, then they would um, abide by it and implement it, but they're not doing it just because it's the Tories. And I don't believe that's the case. Um, I think, you know, I mean, obviously, whatever your job, whatever you get paid to do, whatever your position, you have your morals, you have your ethics, you have your values. And I think, you know, you, you have the right to be able to make your own mind up. Um, and of course, I mean, I think uh, I'm not going to suggest any specific extreme examples, but I think obviously we can all think of examples where we would think, you know, a, a particular policy, we or others or civil servants should not follow those. You know, it's not just a matter of following orders. And I think that's the right thing. Um, and but it, also, but if, if, um, if you're, here, if, you're think, a, mean, like, if you're a vegan, hold, hold on, if you're a vegan, you shouldn't become a butcher, should you? Policy. If you're a vegan, you shouldn't become a butcher. Wow. I mean, even by his standards, this really is stupid. Essentially, his argument is, unless you're willing to be submissive to all government requests, you should never become a civil servant. In essence, his entire argument boils down to the civil service obeying all government instructions. But where the hell would he even draw the line? That's what concerns me. There's absolutely no hint of suggestion civil servants are entitled to any free will whatsoever. It's just obey us or be sacked. And therefore, if you're not willing to carry out the democratically elected policy of the government, you shouldn't become a civil servant. And if you find that the policy is one you cannot support, you think is immoral, then you should resign. You should go and um, join the Church of England with the Archbishop of Canterbury, who doesn't like it either. Um, no, I, I mean, I think obviously, I mean, protesting and striking um, is obviously a legitimate lawful right. And I think that's the right decision. Obviously, if what they were saying, you know, that they're going to be attacking government buildings or doing something, you know, to disrupt government itself, that's a completely different thing. But obviously, I mean, this is a lawful right they have to withdraw their labor and to strike and not become part of a policy that they think is abhorrent. And in fact, it would actually be hypocritical because, like you said, their union, these civil servants, in fact, sued the government. So for them to now be the ones implementing it, um, I think would in fact be hypocritical. So this is the principal, principal stance. It's not something we can stomach. It's not something we're going to be a part of. Um, and it's not just about the money or our jobs. If we think something is abhorrent and inhumane, we're not going to be a part of it. And I but think, it undermines, you know, well done but, them. But it undermines the whole basis of our politically neutral civil service, that the government will win on a mandate and civil servants will implement the decision of that government, whether they agree with it or not, and that civil servants always have to leave their own political opinions outside the office. Otherwise, our constitutional system breaks down and we will have to move to a politicised civil service. Um, I, I don't th I mean, that's the point. Like I made initially, I don't think it's about them being apolitical or politically biased or impartial. It's about them having a humanitarian or moral ethical stance on something. I don't think we should expect them to leave the morals and ethics and human values at home. The point but, is, you know, like I said, if we think they, they're just doing it, you know, because they want the Tories to fail, that's a political stance. Of course, that's wrong. But the point but, is, hopefully, that, and surely they would have taken the same stance, whatever the political power, political party in power. So, of course, they're not doing it for politi political reasons. They're just saying these are desperate, helpless, vulnerable people. We can't send them to their deaths. And but, I think, you know, well done them for well, no, no, being no, a part no. of it. Nobody's sending them to their deaths, and you know that's a perfectly ridiculous thing to say. Their uh, proposition is that they should, that that they should go, go to Rwanda. In Rwanda previously. What Shahab Khan is referring to here, in case you aren't aware, is the deaths of 12 refugees at the hands of Rwandan police. The refugees were staging a protest over their food rations being reduced and were shot dead. That's the case Suella Braverman claims she had absolutely no knowledge of meaning she's either completely incompetent and dim or an appalling liar. And, and we have courts who will decide whether these things are lawful or not. If it's passed by Parliament, there's a democratic majority for it. Civil servants are not there to apply their own judgment. If they don't like what the government's doing, they ought to resign. They cannot be a civil servant and obstruct government policy. And apolitical doesn't limit it to party political. They have to implement the policy decided on by the government, regardless of party politics, 
as a small p politics issue. Um, and, and I, mean, I mean, that's the point. I, I don't agree with that. I mean, I think obviously, like I keep saying, I mean, I think it is a matter of um, personal values. If you think that someone is ordering you to do something inhumane or appalling or something that's potentially going to be, you know, irreversible harm to another vulnerable person, I think it's fine to put your foot down. Whoever that superior is, how much ever they're paying you. But you resign at that point. You say, I can't do this, therefore I cannot work for you. You don't say I'm going on strike. These people have bills to pay. What good is resigning and just having the position filled with a yes man? What good does that do to the person resigning? Absolutely nothing. Why the hell would I resign? If you want to sack me, go ahead and I'll see you in court. That that's the improper part of it. You can never be trusted again as a civil servant once you are saying, I will decide which policies I will implement and which ones I won't, according to my conscience. I mean, I think that's a matter for the uh, political party or the government of the day. If these people are threatened to go on strike, are they going to sack them and see what the repercussions will be? Do they think that's the humane thing to do? These people, I mean, of course, going on strike isn't something unlawful and illegal. They're not blackmailing the government in some way. They're just saying, this is something I'm not willing to do. Then, of course, if the government feels the right thing is to sack them, then we can see what the, you know, what the lawful repercussions of that is. But I don't think someone, you know, someone who's been serving the government, the people, the public, who I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years on one policy that they think is uh, unacceptable, they refuse. And if the government wants to get rid of them, then I think that's a matter for the government. I, I, I think it's much clearer than that. Our basis of our civil service is that they implement whatever the government of the day puts out. And if they're conservatives, they must serve a Labour government. And if they're Labour, they must serve a Conservative government. They are now deciding, or the union wants them to decide, to obstruct a Conservative government in a policy for which there is a mandate. This seems to me to be fundamentally breaking up the terms of engagement with the civil service. Why they should be fired if this is what they do. Um, but like I said, I mean, if the government thinks that's a legitimate case for dismissal, then fine, do that. Let's see what the courts think. Let's see, you know, what the Constitution says about that. Um, but like I said, I don't think they're doing it for political reasons. One would hope they would do exactly the same thing, um, whoever the party in power. Um, and um, yes, I mean, I think if it is against someone's um, personal... I mean, I'm sure we can all think of extreme examples where we would want civil servants to put their um, uh, feet down and to say, no, look, I'm just not going to implement this. Well, the point is, for some of us, um, this might have reached that point. Others might feel, OK, this is not that extreme a measure. But I'm sure, I mean, I, mean, I, I can't... Uh, accept the premise that there can be, you know, whatever the government says, the people must follow orders. I, I well, just can't you. accept that premise. Thank you, Shab. Um, I don't think there's any example of the civil service ever refusing uh, to do something because um, it wasn't left-wing enough. But there we go. As always, we... Well, the reason you can't accept that premise, Shaab, for the same reason I can't accept that premise, is because we aren't fascists. And Rhys Mogg must realise if governments start dismissing civil servants for taking industrial action over something they find either illegal or immoral, that wouldn't end well in an employment tribunal. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you again soon.